I can start thinking about, oh there's one more screw to go in that base plate, let's get that in place, down the end here. I can start fitting the piece into the front here now. Now the first thing that goes in here is this baffle. Now that baffle had a bit of a few bright spots on it where the paint had been knocked off. I've covered those over with some matte black paint. This piece only fits one way in the body. There's two little protrusions that it fits over. So that sits in there nicely like that. I think I need to put this rack in at the same time as I put the next piece in. I don't know whether I can feed it in from the top. I'm sure it's very good at falling out. So that sits up there on that shelf. I'll put some grease on that. I'll just use this synthetic grease. It sits on there like that. I'll fit this into the camera body. It's a snug fit. There you are, that's all sitting there. We have one small nickel plated screw in this position. Three large nickel plated screws in the other positions, top and bottom. Alright, those are all in place, I can tighten them up. Now the cocking rack can go in place, I might just as well put the top chrome trim in place at this point. The caulking rack, I'm applying a little bit of synthetic grease to the underside of this. Get that in there, swing that around and get that lined up. Now it's probably going to be there with two teeth engaged. I'll just check the action. Yes, that, that's good. That all moves nicely. So, the strap lug can go in place.
Now that's a bit tight. There was a spacer under here somewhere, so we'll just see if that's going to make a difference. We put the spacer under there. The shim washer. So we'll find our shim washer and put it under there and see if that'll make a difference. It probably will. Where's it gone? Is it stuck to something? Probably is. There it is, hiding. Let's try that. That's it. Nice smooth action. Okay, well that part is all looking pretty good. I think I'll put the rewind shaft in place. This needs to be lubricated with some synthetic grease. There's a little brass tension spring inside the rewind post here lubricated that, check that it moves smoothly, that's all good, goes into the camera body, two screws, Tighten those up, that's done. Now the strap lug. The strap lug looks a little bit bent to me. There's a pronounced curve at this point. It should come straight out at an angle like this. So I'll just straighten that up with some pliers. That looks a bit happier. Put that in place on the body. Now the holes in the strap lug are slightly slotted. I've found from experience that if you push this strap lug as far to the end of the body as you possibly can against those screw heads and tighten them up 99 times out of 100, that's the right position. Okay, so that's the top of the camera body back together. Film advance moves smoothly. We've got to get our shutter release components in here and our cocking action in here. Now that'll have to be timed correctly. The shutter release is, is by comparison is easy mate. That can only go in one position. And I could guess what that's likely to be, but chances are we're going to be back here moving this later. Let's have a look at the shutter next, I think. Might just as well fit that stuff back once at a convenient time. Here's our shutter and lens assembly. I'm looking to see how this is constructed. I can see three screw heads here, here and here, underneath that name ring, which will certainly clamp the um, focus scale ring to the front group, I would think. So if I unscrew that front 
name ring, which is loose. Um, I'll just spin that off with the toothpick. It probably means it wasn't tightened after the last repair. Not that any harm was likely to come from that. Take the name ring off. So what I'm going to do is loosen those three screws. What we need to do is unscrew the front. The front group screwed into that, uh, into the centre group is what's holding this all together. And there's a stop on this piece which prevents that from rotating all the way. So if we split the link between the two we can just unwind that lens completely. The whole process will lift off. I want a friction tool for that. Let's loosen the three screws. They will clamp the focus scale ring to that centre group, that front group. You can see that front group sitting there. We can just unscrew that front group just like this. It'll lift out. You can see the arrangement here. Those three screws come through and hold this plate and that plate traps the front group in place. So we'll pop that to one side of the name ring. The centre group, you can see this is full of clever marks that someone's made. Um, not sure why they would. Presumably they thought it was clever to align it in some fashion. And the rear group, the rear group will try and get off with the friction tool again. Where's a different one? Is it? That's all it needed. So the rear group will unscrew. Pop that over there. And the centre group, well there's two holes there to engage tools. And it depends how tight that is. Um, a pair of tweezers may well get that loose. So I'll start with that, and if not, I'll find another tool. Now that's been done up very tight. I can use this tool. Oh, that was a, a shimmering falling off the back there. The shimmerings are used to set the distance from the shutter to the body so that during assembly they could get, match the two up conveniently. Right, I think that the points I've got for this tool are probably not small enough to engage in that. I may use something else. I mentioned this earlier, this is a pair of circlet pliers that's been adjusted. That is very tight. I don't like the feel of that at all. Someone has gone out of their way to tighten that up. That was absolutely unnecessary. You can see the marks on there that someone has struggled with that in the past. The tool has slipped out of that hole there and what this little sunray alignment arrangement here is these scratches on blow to by name. Okay well I certainly want that off. I'm thinking of my, what my options are. There's a little mark on the top here. There's a mark right through the thread at that point too. I hope that's not been split. It almost looks like that's... Is a, I hope that's a scratch and not a crack.
Or their depth of field pointers. I don't know if I can disassemble that and remove this whole front piece or not. No, I don't think I can. I think this is trapped in by that lens. So I'm going to have to get that loose one way or another. Well, last time I struck one like this, the answer was to use this tool, set it in a vise, so that it was just points up, set the lens on it, and then use... I think I used a leather glove to grip the uh, shutter and rotate the shutter. So I think that's what I'm going to have to do again. Um, it's much easier to have this tool fixed in a vise so that I can concentrate on turning this rather than trying to hold this in one hand and use this tool in the other given how tight that is. So I'll be back once I've succeeded. That went exactly as expected. It worked fine. So I'll just spin this off. That was no trouble at all once I had that all sitting in the vice points up, fitted to the lens. I was able to unscrew the shutter from the lens using my hand. No, uh, nothing particularly tricky involved. Didn't even need to find a leather glove in order to stop my hand getting sore. Right, okay, now this is looking a bit messy here. I'll zoom you in a bit, you can see what I mean. All right, this is what happens when people use a screwdriver or some sharp tool to turn a retaining ring. See all those scratches and scrapes? That was entirely unnecessary. There's a small screw here that locks that retaining ring in place. We'll just remove that. in a container or I won't lose it. That retaining ring, typically I'll get them off, push them around with a toothpick. The toothpick won't do it. A bamboo skewer is a bit more robust than a toothpick. But there we go, just push that around with a toothpick or a bamboo skewer or something so that if you slip you don't scar that ring. That's just a mess made there for no good reason. Right. So now our front ring lifts off there, that's the retainer ring. Now here's our depth of field pointers. Now this unit here, I'm going to take it apart and clean it. If you're feeling a bit uh, less than brave, leave it alone. They're not easy to get back together. This little ball here is the detent for our shutter speeds. Don't lose that. Put that carefully to one side. This was our shutter speed. This is the ring for changing our shutter speeds. That couples to the plate here. Let's take that off. You can take that off. We're down to a bare shutter really at this point. The shutter speeds cam settings plate that can come off and here we have a uh, fairly conventional compor shutter that's our re shutter release lever that's the, the shaft that cocks the shutter Just cock that so that I can take out the retard gear train. It's held in place with two screws. We'll 
one that holds the delay action or self timer in position. Okay. I'll unhook the spring from the main drive cam. I'll have a look at that spring. It looks like a good one to me. I think that's got quite a lot of tension to it. Let's have a look. See if I'm right. Yes, I am. That spring's like new. If you take that as your 12 o'clock position, this spring is at about the 2 o'clock position. Well, that's like what they look like when they're new. Frequently, they're somewhat tired and they don't look like that. Okay, a bit more to come off the plate. You see a moving flash contact here. Take that screw out. There's a spacer washer. Don't lose that. Needs to go back on the top. Here's our moving contact. Here's our B lever. That's held in place with this screw. That screw also has the return spring for the settings lever for our self timer. The shutter doesn't have X and M flash sync like the retinas. It just has M sync, X sync rather, which is fine for electronic flash. Take that spring off and carefully put that to one side. That's all I need to strip off the top of that uh, mechanism plate. At the bottom, come on video camera, hurry up. That's a bit better. Three screws hold the aperture setting lever in place. That's this piece. It's a bit grubby looking. I've got a shim that sits on top of that and this is the lever that sets our self timer. Now this plastic insulator here is quite damaged. Someone's made a mess of that. I think I'll have to put a bit of heat shrink around the base of that. that otherwise this is in danger of shorting against the uh, casting. Here's some sort of gunk on there. I don't know what that is. It looks like, looks like glue really. It's missing a bit of plastic here. It's a bit chewed up looking and melted. That's funny because there's nothing soldered on there. I don't know why they've made such a mess of that. Um, I wonder if it's possible to damage that with solvent if you're using too much solvent in the camera. I suppose it's possible. Okay, we'll leave that as it is. We'll deal with that later. Three screws on the shutter case hold the shutter case and the mechanism plate together. The shutter is basically the same as that found on a Retina 3C type camera except we only have the single flash sync speed not double flash sync speeds. Right, so there's our mechanism plate. Blades look a little bit oily, nothing too dramatic. Here is the case. Three screws hold the retainer plate in place. Now on two occasions lately, I found that one of those three screws was a foreigner. And it was one with larger diameter thread and it had been used to replace the original because the original had been stripped out. Very unusual and to find it twice so 
soon one after the other really surprised me. Okay, these blades are quite clean. This all, need, all needs to be cleaned carefully to get rid of all the dust and rubbish. It's not a bad example by any means. Let's have a look at the mechanism plate. Well, our shutter blades, you can certainly see they're marked. That's oil marks there. But they're not bad examples. They probably weren't sticking. Um, of course, they'll be cleaner when we've finished anyway. And the mechanism plate is held together with three screws that hold the lens tube to the mechanism plate and the blade actuating ring is trapped between the mechanism plate and the lens tube. One of these three screws is longer than its mates and that's because it passes through this bracket. Here we go. Now that is stripped down as far as we're going to need. The plate's looking quite clean. There's no obvious oil on that. Um, this be, should be straightforward to clean this and uh, reassemble everything. The speed trains, I will take these, I'll put those into some naphtha in the ultrasonic cleaner and they can be nice and clean when we come back. Some of the stuff's really quite dirty looking. I really don't know what that's... I know what it's reminiscent of. It's reminiscent of someone flood cleaning things when I see surfaces that are as dirty as this. We'll see if that stuff wipes off. If it does, yes, then somebody flood cleaned us. It's some sort of dirt or corrosion or something. It certainly shouldn't be there. It's not normal to see that. There is oil here. Well, those patterns remain. That's some of that staining still there. I don't know what was that, what happened there. I think it's something to do with the choice of lubricant that was used. The aluminium case doesn't show any obvious corrosion at that point. Had that been a corrosion problem, the aluminium case would certainly be quite dull there. That's not the case. Okay, so I've just got to clean everything and put everything back together.